I again don't remember <laughs> which sibling I was last time. Was it Alari? You were Alari. Yeah. Week number twelve of the the recording opening and Dion saying I can't remember who I was. <laughs> I love the fact oh, yeah. that everyone just brushed over the fart reaper. <laughs> I Not wouldn't say rushed about. over. It's just been. I mean, given like... that the last roll says Alari, I'm assuming Alari. Yeah, look, it's two weeks between sessions, okay? Like, I have, like, several other games in between <laughs> that point, and I'm playing two characters in this one, so. I mean, it's easy enough. You just scroll up and see who you rolled as last. Generally, that's who and... you are. It's not usually my first port or call when I log in to Roll20. That's fair. So, uh, greetings everyone and welcome back to the Dark Tides of Rune Terror for potentially the last time. And by potentially, I mean if we go on for any more sessions, it's just milk. <laughs> <laughs> no one will get milk. that now. It's all milk. That's true. Just milk. That's true. <laughs> 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 no, he's dead now. He's dead now. He's dead now. The milk got him. <laughs> <laughs> milk. He's drowning in his own milk. Wait, that sounds horrible. <laughs> My bones will be strong. <laughs> <laughs> you come out for like 10 minutes straight, and that's what you come back with. <laughs> <laughs> So the last time, <laughs> you all travelled up to try and have a word with... Well, I think at first you were trying to find Udia, but you ended up getting sidetracked after your ship was almost blown up. Yeah. And you ended up having a discussion with essentially the gods of the Freljord, or at least two, two of them. Abducted. And I collected the infinity uh, prefixes. Yeah... Got the infinity prefixes, lads. And you pretty much talked Volibear down from possessing Alexander and letting Alexander try and do things his way. Which then we turned our attention to essentially the final mission for the group the separation of the twins. With your ship prepared, and everyone ready to set off with, I believe, Anivia guiding you towards where she sent to Zudia. Mm -hmm. Alari, if I recall right, you had just been handed the relic that Mariah had forged for you. The yeah, the... easily split apart tiara. The circlet, yeah. Yes, the circlet. What is happening with this? I'm sorry, not with, not with the game itself. I was just getting distracted because apparently they're having controller issues with the PS5. That's my bad. So, um, did you all get ready to board the ship? Go on. You were about to say something. I was just, uh, no, it's fine. I'll wait till we're on the ship. Okay. So, as you all board the ship with all the NPCs rating, the Navy will just look to you like, I'll take flight first. You follow close behind. Sure. You still sound uneasy. I think you would be too, in this case. I don't know if it'll work. And then my only other option is Sharima. Or I have releasing a dragon from under a mountain, which my friend was very well against, so... <laughs> Distant screams from the void. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I was the first couple of times. Or at least for my own version of this. It's going to be strange if I do get my own form back. But it is I'm not what sure you. What I'll do. It is what you decide, or is it not? It is. I just. I don't know what I'll do, once I have it back. Ever since we escaped, 
my entire focus has been protecting us. Then why would things need to change? Granted, because your sister may want distance, but there are still plenty of people that could do with your protection. I guess we'll see when I get there. I don't want to get my hopes up just yet. And then Ivia will take off. I'm assuming, I'm assuming Patu's at the hell after <coughs> being grabbed. Sure, sure, why not? <laughs> I'm not going to be going very far anytime soon. <laughs> I've been bare handled. <laughs> you caught these bare hands. <laughs> Every citizen is entitled to a right. Uh, to their right, to a pair of bear arms that hang on their wall. Just remember that. I don't see you going to try and pull Volley Bear's arms off there. Girl, those aren't bear arms. Those are dad arms. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Volley Daddy? Yes, obviously. <laughs> Anyway. Have you ever had one of those moments where you hear something and your vision just blurs and fades and you just feel your head slowly <laughs> turning diagonally left, like downwards, <laughs> just like as if your brain just needs a moment to comprehend what was said. I think I just have one of those. <laughs> that's not uh, comprehending, that's your brain trying to snap your own neck. <laughs> you're fine. Three you're head fine. tilt moment. Pretty much. <laughs> so... Don't worry about it. I, I believe we need to quote Josh from last session with this. Back in the closet, dear fairy. <laughs> no. Don't worry about it. I showed Rebecca that line early, by the way, and it broke her. <laughs> <laughs> so. Are you taking a go off after an avia pit too? Mm, yes, that seems like a logical thing to do. Follow so the you... bird. Not you, the other bird. Follow the bird. The <laughs> ship spins on the spot. You're awesome. <laughs> mm, I think you mean follow the iceberg. Oh. We are not doing elemental bergs. <laughs> Waffleberg, iceberg, fireberg. Boulderberg. Plasmaberg. Aspergers. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> Turns out Waffleberg didn't actually die. He just got blown into all the elements. Oh god. Fetch quest to receive. It means <laughs> piece back together, Waffleberg. It's like finding the one piece, but finding the bird. No, that is Fine. milk. In, that is just milk at that point. <laughs> it's just milk. It's so. always been milk. You prepare the ship as it takes off, following close behind an avia. Takes you south and to the west a bit. <coughs> All the familiar territory. Juicy villages and places you have traded before as a group and solo. And I'm going to need a perception check from... A lorry for this. One second. One. Mouse, mouse likes to go on standby. No. You don't spot it. You don't spot the location that you're heading. Ah. But you feel something building up inside. Sort of warmth or a heat. Starting around the heart and then spreading to the rest of your body. Just kind of like looking down at yourself as this is happening. It's like, 
That doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel good. Um, heat. Like, more than normal spreading. Alexander was going to say, I'd be a little concerned if you'd only just realized you were on fire. No, it's... <laughs> Does it feel like, kind of like, when the heat's losing control? Like, a when the fire's bit. kind of going out of control? A little bit like that. But also, you have felt this before. You felt this the last time you were in the Freljord. At a certain place. Oh, the world room? Rygan's Reach. Oh, Rygan's Reach. Where the world rune is... Well, this certain world rune is buried. Where your father lost his life. And where you have kind of... to save Umpa from Singed. Now actively just kind of looking over the edge, do I see that we're near Rygan's Reach? Indeed you do. And Anivia seems oh, that to be lowering sense. herself. Anivia is lowering down towards it. He's in Rygan's Reach? Who you uh, What is Rygan's Reach? Uh, you can make me a history check, Alexander. I'm next chance. Chance? What? Am I having a stroke? Right, um... Yes. I've had enough of them today. <laughs> uh, what? Um... <laughs> so... Not awful. Continue. Ligon's Reach. An area found in the southern areas, known as... Lockfar in the Freljord. Essentially put, it used to be a nice little village. Until uh, the Fire hang on. Nation attacked. Yeah. Oh, not this. It was a nice little village. Just stood there, quite nice and pleasant. Until one day when it was just destroyed. Just went up in fire and explosions. Since then, it's been rumored to have been cursed by an evil mage and her son. Oh, oh, no, 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 Exactly. They sing. They're singing the song of their people. Hapata hapata. So, the ship is lowering. <clears throat> Nevia will land in the destroyed village that you once fought through. As she looks up, she will. Sweep with her left wing to clear a space for the ship to land. No. As the usual sirens and warnings go off for the gently used fish as it lands, you're finding it. Uh, make me a constitution set, uh, just quickly, there, would you? Uh, Laurie? Hey. Oh. Oh. Um, I'm a sorcerer. <laughs> I'm a sorcerer. It still gets a plus six. Yeah, sorcerers get <laughs> constitution as one of their uh, saving throws. Oh, proficiencies. Yeah. For some reason I'm thinking Pathfinder. <laughs> yeah. Because you're hyped for it, which I'm glad about. I mean... As I said, you know when I get into a character when it starts being a lot more physical acting than just voice acting. But yes. As the ship lands, you are managing to keep on your feet. But the air feels heavy. And it just keeps getting warmer. Olivia will look to you. 
Do you need aid or assistance with that? It is... I'm holding it together for now, but I don't know if I'll be able to... Forever. You are Iceborne, yes? Mm -hmm. She is going to bring her two wings together. And you'll just see ice start to form between them. As it then just drops into the snow. Keep that close to your heart. Should help with the cooling process. Thanks. Don't let any of the others touch it though, aside from maybe Alexander. The others may not be able to handle it. I mean, consider I've been wearing true eyes on my fists for a while, so. Yes, I guess but. I'm used to it by now. Unless you want to keep your hands to your chest at all times, this may be a better solution. That's fair. Just kind of picks up the piece of true ice. Yep. It does have like a little bit of a chain to it that she's pulled out from one of the houses. Just so it can be like worn over along the neck and just rest against the chest. Yeah, she'll put it on. It's cold, sharp, but it evenly balances out the temperature that you're currently feeling. He's over there, the one that you seek. She will motion towards the cave with a wink. Let's go see him then. So as you head over there, is anyone else heading over there with a lorry? No reason not to. <laughs> not told otherwise. Uh, Mariah, are you heading over as well? Yes. Okay. So you're accompanied by your usual allies. I'm assuming the Eggplant King is going as well because he's a Mariah's hair. Yeah. So. Oh, and because uh, I keep forgetting because uh, Rakra is here. It's Pinko going as well. He, he will just kind of swattle behind. Okay. So the group heads us one. United one more time towards the cave. Those who were here last time, you can still see tracks and scars on the ground from the battle. Included the clear footsteps of someone running away as fast as they can to the right. <laughs> that was when Delrus burned him. And stood outside the opening of the cave. You'll find someone who, the best way to describe it is, you take Alexander, you make their hair longer, you make their beard longer, you make them somewhat older, and you give them a dad gut. So I think we've joked about him being older. Alexander's dad before. We have for several times. <laughs> this has been a thing going on for several months. And he'll just raise up from his meditation and look to you. So you are the one, two, as one. I, yes. My name's Alari. And the other is Delrus, <coughs> if my research is correct, yes? Mm hmm Which would make you lot Alexander. That is correct. Oh, they didn't even let me do introduction. <laughs> He'll just kind of smoke and then just kind of tilt his head. And I am going to roll something for him. It would help if it put a slash before the R. Yeah. He does not notice anything. Hmm. And the avian, Putu, yes? <clears throat> That's my name. And that would make the small one, Mariah. She's yeah, doing... that's me. Um, Mariah, distracted. He'll look off over your shoulders to Pinko. 
And uh, you are the anomaly. Pinko will just turn around and look around like something's behind him and then look back at this strange man, confused. It's the Poro that uh, is not a Poro. It's he it's almost Pinko. seems offended. Pinko, that's the one. So. He shows up from time to time. You know what? He's offended. I really hope everybody fails. Everybody that matters fails. <laughs> <laughs> what? Idiot. <clears throat> Damn it. Who do you do and if he did? Local shaman passes with sight beyond sight. Literal god. Eh? Where'd it go? I'm sorry, why Where'd did it go? You said that? I just got a fucking Thundercats reference in my head, just like Sight Beyond Sight. Yeah. <laughs> Give me sight beyond sight. So is anyone else going to roll to see if they spot where pink was going? I don't think Alari cares that much, right? I'll make a chair, but we'll disadvantage because I really wasn't no. paying much attention. That's fair. No. <laughs> Cause like he disappears all the time, so That's fair. Uh, Patu and Mariah, are you two going to sure, take Sure, why not? Tonight? Not in a particularly interested in the thing, but it's always <gasps> fun. Uh, 14? So you'd be able to see where Pinko went. Uh, Mariah? Just give me one second, my roll 20s. Having Hi. a stroke. Yeah, essentially it is. Your roll 20 doesn't want it to end. No, it doesn't. I don't want it to end. <laughs> milk, milk, milk. You really took that milk to heart, huh? I have. That'll oh, be like... why you get acid reflux, like. <laughs> Does milk do that? Because that would explain a lot. Milk no, it can. Does helps. the opposite. Yeah, it does the opposite. Doesn't. Yeah. No, okay. Then I would not like to see what. Milk like is alkaline, not acid. Then I would hate to see what I'd be like if I went on like a dairy-free diet. Yeah, dairy tends to help call acid reflux more than calls it. So, uh, Alari and Alexander, you two are too focused. Pitu and Mariah, you see where Pinko goes. Where does Pinko go? As he kind of slowly shuffles up the wall and finds a tiniest little ledge to just perch on. And he just stares. Oh. It's over, Anakin. Pinko has the high ground. Pinko has the high ground. <laughs> he will... Udia will look to you, Alari. So you have been sent to me as Destiny foretold. I... sure, I to guess. To right a wrong made so long ago by outsiders to this land. Sure. You seem unsure, uneasy. I have gotten my hopes off more times. Yeah, got your than hopes I would off. Like to have this issue resolved. I'm trying to be optimistic, but. Well. The theory holds that the only reason you survived the experiment in the first place in the state you are is because of the rune's power. Therefore, the rune's power should technically be able to reverse it. Hope so. It does, however, come with its own risks. Because you will be needing to go in there, to the rune itself. Just know, if things go south, if things do not go the way they should be, or if your resolve falters, 
could result in destruction of one or both of you. <coughs> Are you mm. willing to accept this? I am. But if this will be a challenge of willpower, it may be better if Delris is the one to face this. A challenge of will, body, basically everything that encompasses you both. Yes, well. But if we'll be testing you both at the same time. So it doesn't matter who's the one front at the front. Pretty much. The only way it would matter, I suppose. And he will just think just about this before I nodded. The one who is inside rather than outside will have the biggest risk of fading should things go wrong. And I definitely want her on the outside. Is that what she would want, though? No, because we're both stubborn bastards about it. Yeah, then you, you just turn on the shovel ability, and this is just, uh... Ilari and Doris hit themselves with a shovel repeatedly for the next 20 <laughs> minutes. Just take off, take out that no, thing. You, that no, you! No, you! No, <laughs> you! Just take out that thing that Hyradinger put in to stop the blunt force trauma being the thing that makes them switch, and just, like... They just end up killing each other. <laughs> with blood force trauma. I'm looking up something. <laughs> I agree. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe I don't want to go down that route for that. I was looking up what colour happens if you mix blue and orange to see what you mm. get stuck in as so the go between. Uh... <laughs> what skin tone were your parents? Normal I believe they were white, like tone. most Australian are. Just uh, say normal. <laughs> <laughs> well, for ice point, for fairly audience. I see. Hey, it's not my fault. Look at riots for that. Human they tone. Have, they have not done. Like every fairly audience is white for some reason. It's weird. Well, it's primarily because they're based off of a northern group of individuals that were at the like, white. They're Northmen. That's that's what they're based off yeah. of. They're essentially fucking Vikings. Basically, I looked it up. Apparently, orange and blue makes brown. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> so they're going, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> When combined, you make an... You become a chocolate bar. <sighs> so... Are you going to try and bring Dalrus out? Uh, yeah. Make your check? or No, you can just use the failure check, can't you? I can, yeah. So, you close your eyes, and Dalrus switches in. Dalrus gets shunted to the front. And as he sees and... the changes happen... How it also I... means... So, I, I will point out, during this entire time she's been speaking to him, she's had the masquerade tattoo up so that she is looks like Alari with the blue yep. skin, blue hair, the same features that she used to have. So that kind of fades now and she's back as being... She's now Delverse again. So how much am I going to have to repeat here? No, I know what's happening! Motherfucker! <laughs> We are not done with this conversation. Me or with your sister? Her. Right. You may want to both try and get on the same page here. Lest you... You know. <sighs> Look, I'll accept it. But we're yeah. having more of a conversation about this later. I'm going to beat that self-sacrificing shit out of you. 
<laughs> Turns out that is the last fight of this game, Alori versus Delrus. <laughs> but imagine though. Winner takes the body. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to, she's going to pull out her, uh, a medallion out of her pocket, though, and just kind of press it to her, her mouth for a moment. Um, and she's going to use the medal of the meat pie just to get in some temporary hit points. I forgot about the that. The medal of the meat pie. I forgot about that. Yeah. It's a one-time use magic item, uh, that grants you... Uh, two d four plus two temporary hit points. Yep. So roll your two d four. It's a common magical item. So he will look at you and be like, "So just in case the worst would come to pass, I will give you some time just to have a moment with your allies here." Let me know when you are ready to enter. Yeah. Kind of goes over to the guys. So! Looks like it's happening. You should know that Alexander has full confidence in you. Mm. Alexander has never known less. <laughs> yeah, we've been through worse. Alexander has one question. If your sister dies, can he have the Raven? <laughs> <laughs> that's not a, that, that's not being asked, that's being assumed. Um <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, out of character, Alari's not even sure if she wants Draven at the moment. So <laughs> There's a question for once she's done with this bullshit. Is Patu or Mariah wanting to say anything to uh, to Delris before Delris steps in? Uh, Patu's not good with words, but I imagine Patu will give her a hearty slap on the back. Uh, I'm sh sure you'll oh, both sorry. do fine. Mariah. Um, Mariah won't. Mariah will just be looking to be honest with you. She won't be. She'll be. She'll be away with the fairies as usual. Away with the fairies. Um. <laughs> so the others aren't here, and there's some risk to this. Uh, if I don't come back, can you like? Tell Nico I'm sorry. Of course. But you will and, come like, back. Look after Draken and like oh, uh, she'll pull out Pebble out of her pocket. The little Krug. And hand it to uh it goes to hand it to um and Patu, until remembers he has literally uh, got a ruin in them that repels dead things for the most part, and then hands him to Alexander as a take care of him. Um, so what did you just give me? A pet rock? It's, uh, it's a living rock. Alexander will look at it and go, um, Alexander was a... I, I, uh, 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 it's a rock. Do you not you remember mean... Pebble? He created that mist barrier around us when we went to the Isles. We went to the Isles that... of the Dead. Alexander, you've got to understand, I've saved the world since then. Well, take care of him. He's a good boy. <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll keep an eye on the pet. <laughs> he's, I, he's a living creature. He's a Krug. They're living stone. Yeah, hang on. I'll throw a picture of one into the D&D chat. Just for a refresher. He's a little pebble size. He's a little palm size Krug. Uh, this kind of looks like take care of Draken and Nyx and Kelpira. 
Um, I would say take care of Sharky. I, I, well, I asked take care of Sharky because if I die, he just kind of goes back to being a normal wharf rat, I guess. Um, yes. <clears throat> so just, just take care of them all. And Umpa. Take, take care of Umpa. Of course, of course. If we don't come back, she's gonna be real upset, so I guess we gotta. Well, I guess see you on the other side when we're hopefully no longer stuck. Be sure to give each other a hug when you're. So, sort of. D do the thing where you place hand on shoulder, just. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just imagining, like, Castellaris is, like, five foot two. <laughs> There's just, like, three distinct cracking sounds as he pats her on the shoulder. On your shoulder. Castellaris is, like, five foot four, so, like, she's tiny. She's just like. <laughs> Alexander puts hand Crunch. on Delris's shoulder. Delris has lost all those temporary hit points already. <laughs> Alexander knows he's going to see two people come back through. But good luck in there regardless. Yeah. It's either this or we become animal people in Shirima. Hey, there's so, something wrong with being an Alexander will just let that sit around and go, What? <laughs> yeah, that was the other option. Uh, 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 become like uh, Waffleberg. Well, not quite like Waffleberg, more like Mathis. That was our other option. They would become obviously confused. Alexander is obviously confused. They would become sunborn. Kind of, yeah. You have begun to speak different language from Alexander. How interesting. Fun fact, I just looked, when I were looking stuff up earlier to research for today's session, I found out that uh, the older Freljordians and the gods actually call the Ascended the Sun Boy. Yeah. Yeah, there's actually a point. Uh, there's actually a point in history where, uh, because the Shreeman Empire stretched pretty fucking far, the Shreema and the Freljord were at war with one another. Yep. That's so. neat. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh God. I've got a pee. Ooh. So, One second. Udia will place a hand on Delris' shoulder, and the two will enter the cave. And shortly afterwards, Udia will exit by himself, as he just stands there and looks to you all. I have every confidence that you will make it, that they will both make it. Well, they're both very strong. They both got strong wills. Yeah. That's what's going to matter the most. Hmm. I'm sorry, did did you hear just speak, little one? Sneeze. Uh, no. I am now, but no. I wasn't earlier. You've got a tiny purple lump in your head. I I'm aware. It talks. Yes. I mean, I need people to realize that I'm about three foot tall, which means I'm about the same height as most of the yordles. The... <laughs> oh. I was expecting many a thing today. Not that. No. I'm back. Welcome back. No one ever expects the... Uh... Eggplant Inquisition. He is then going to look. Hey, how the fuck do you know about that? <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about our dark part of our history that happened ten days ago. Uh, wouldn't you like to know? Use a, use a spy or something. Use, use one of those new fang dangle spy thing. Yeah, I'm done talking now. So. Alari, uh, that was, you've been guided into the cave before Udia has basically showed you the path and turned back himself, knowing mm -hmm. that he cannot go any further. 
Okay. We can do this. <laughs> the pathway is long and winding as it continues to descend down into the ground. The cold... Also, she will have left Sharky outside yep. with the others, even though he's still a little flamey boy. The cold is replaced with just heat building further and further. He's kind of holding on to the... Can I have a con save? Holding on to the... the... thing. The true ice necklace. Yep. It's a little bit of a struggle, but you're managing to keep hold. There is a sweat this. on your brow. And just a That's dampness new. in general. <laughs> Until you realize... As you go to wipe some from your forehead, it's not just perspiration. The gauntlets and the thing around your chest are actually beginning to melt. Which, given that these are made from true ice, that should not be able to happen. Mm. You eventually make it to a large cavern. You're in the direct centre. The cause of all this heat is only just a small floating red crystal. The world run. There does indeed seem to be like a rune-like shape glowing inside of it. I guess there's one goodbye I didn't say. Dad, you were guarding this place. And, well, I'm gonna do this. Make me a perception check. <laughs> you weren't very good at it. As you're saying this, thinking about your father, your eyes glance to what seems to be a scorched mark. Over to the right. One that, once you finally get to the right angle and look at it, takes the shape of a body slumped over, the back leaning against the wall. Or you can presume to be your father. Or at least his last remaining place. Just thought I'd bring you some news before I potentially disappear too. Mom stopped drinking for the most part. She's started helping take care of Umpa. Even her and Alari aren't fighting as much. And this is where something odd happens. Mm -hmm. You sense another presence in the room with you. Turn to where I sense it. You turn to where you sense it, over towards the rune itself. And there you see someone who both looks familiar and yet you have not seen in some time. Quite short, bluer skin compared to yours. You see a Lari. Alari's tall. Tall, sorry. Not short. Alari's like six foot tall. I got it mixed up. <laughs> She's like more average Feliordian yeah. height. Delrus is the midget. But you do indeed. It's okay. Her. Compared to the majority compared to the majority of the party, she was short. Yeah. <laughs> but you do indeed see Alari stood there. Her fr visage kind of translucent as if she doesn't have her form yet. But she is there watching you. Her mouth opening as if she's trying to say something, but the words aren't coming through. No, smiles at her as a. Well, I guess we better start this. Wait, how do we start this? She'll turn to look to the rune. 
emotion be able to come across it. Mm -hmm. Do you approach? Yeah. It's always like, hi, world ruin, can you fix us? Make me another con save. Can I use Alari's abilities while I'm like this, or is it like... Given that you are both technically still in the same body... No. Yeah, I had a feeling. You start to get closer, and every step feels like you're wearing light boots, essentially. It is hard to walk. You feel yourself falling to your knees as you crawl towards the room instead. Alari like, will I'm reach a hand down do this. to offer to help you up. Despite her, translucent, despite her translucent form, you feel something solid as she pulls you up. Before she reaches out as if ready to place her hands on the rune itself. Delros will do the same. He just kind of looks at her. It's like, we gotta do this for everyone. And for Umpa. As you do so. A vision. Or an image. Flashes across the rune. The figure you've seen before stares back at you both. A man with charred, cracked skin, glowing from within, stirs back. Man. So you have come for that which makes me, me. You finally decided to accept your destiny. No. We're here to separate from each other. And who's to say that isn't your destiny? Because we'll never let ourselves become a loser like you. <laughs> Someone who cares about nothing but power. You mistake me, child. Who do you think you're talking to right now? Well, considering the image you're showing me, I thought it was the weirdo I met in the desert. The shell of what I have become. Allow me to introduce myself then. I am Keegan Road. The person that that thing became. The one who originally found the world rune failed its test. We didn't choose this. This is just how we were born. We didn't choose to be forced to share our body with each other. We're here to fix that. To separate. No, to be able to have our own lives. No, I'm here to make sure that you do not... Uh, how best to put this? Repeat my same mistakes. We got this people waiting for us. We don't have that luxury. I'm not saying I'm here to stop you from separating. I'm here to act as a guide to make sure that that goes well, and you don't both either die or become like I hated. Mm -hmm. Hence why I said I don't want you to repeat my mistakes. So where do we start? By making a connection with the rune itself. But not letting it overpower. As much as it wants to enter you, you are going to have to shut it out and then pause your own will on it. Mm. 
that goes for both of you. Are you ready to attempt this? As ready as we'll ever be. Then place your hands. Yep. First of all, uh, now comes the interesting part. I'm going to need, first things first, a con save from both Alari and Delris. So, as you both place your hands on it, there is definitely a loud hiss and sizzle as you feel your hands starting to burn just from the sheer touch of this. Yet you manage to keep your hands on, just about. So it's like we're not going to have fingerprints after this. And you feel the energy and the heat start to try and invade your physical selves. Make me a wisdom save from for both. Dallas, you push back. You feel it trying to enter, and you manage to forcefully just shut it out. Alari's form begins to waver, however. She is less successful. You see the body. Pretty much go how it did underneath Bran's influence. The flames erupting. Just like, Alari, hold on. Weird as it sounds, you've got a kid to go back to. <coughs> and that's when you both receive it. A vision of the past, of history itself unfolding. Of the runes themselves making it their way to Runeterra after it is formed by the Star Dragon himself. Of the rune wars happening between all the mages. Of the great catalysm. Cat cataclysm? Cataclysm. cataclysm? Cataclysm. Thank you. The great cataclysm happened. The me being also instead of being at it by Sandra. And the history of Rune Terror itself just flashing by. Almost at a rapid pace. Before it starts to slow down upon the birth of two children. I'm going to need you both to make me wisdom saves again. Can Alari use her strands of fate? Yes. That's a bit better. Let's see what Dalrys gets. Not 20, jeez. Of course, uh, Dalrys is the one who's good at wisdom. She's a monk and a druid. Dalrys, you manage to remain calm and composed. Despite the fact that your lives are literally flashing before your eyes. However, as you do look to your side, you will see tears of flame streaking down that are Larry's cheeks. Not from the power of overwhelming, but from grief and sadness. She do indeed see your slightly torturous childhood leading to the purchase and you all literally being tortured before the memories seem to start fading into one. The joint life begins before your eyes. The escape, fleeing to Bilgewater, meeting a certain Arakroka, Festayan, a Yordle, 
a dragon-like Vestayan and a small little kobold-like Vestayan. You're all banding together to fight against the Shadow Isles. Your travels that take you to Piltover, where you encounter an interesting robot made of porcelain and a small ring that gives way to a free-eyed yordle. As well as finding another bird like Vestayan down in Zorn. Your travels with them to save the lands from the Shadow Isles and the Ruination. To stop the void. Your meetings with several beings and several deities. And even that one odd time when you all became yordles for a while. Yeah, with. And of course, that fateful moment that happened, albeit like a week or so ago, where you had to watch three of those friends, the free-eyed yordle, the living doll, the god that didn't want to be a god sacrificed their lives to save the world i'm gonna need wisdom saves one more time alari is fine this time and delris i'm trying to get the shoes hold on i should just accompany this with little drum rolls just <laughs> Alari holds on, the tears stop. However, you feel them flowing down your cheeks now. And then you feel a hand brush them away. You expect it to be from your sister, or perhaps your own body acting out by its own accord. And then you see what well, seems to be a ghostly spirit in the room with you. Oh, you look into the spirit? Mm hmm You look and you don't see your father. You do see another welcoming face, however. Another what? Another welcoming face. Okay. Wafflebug finds it a little bit weird that you're calling him your dad. You're more like a grandpa. I did not expect there was many things I didn't expect during this incredibly climatic speech. Wafflebug questioning why someone's calling him daddy was not one of them. <laughs> it's a little weird. Wafflebug has to just say, a little weird. All right, Shad, you're more like a grandpa. Mm. Wait, is this actually Wafflebird? I mean, he doesn't look... He, he, he both looks like and doesn't look like Wafflebird. Um, he, he's got that sort of spiritual effect that sometimes when you look at him, he looks like the bird, and sometimes he looks like a sort of... Arabic skin coloration, older human being. Um, but it's Waffleberg. So you're the last ghost I expected to see down here. I told you I'd haunt your ass forever. Also, that I'd assist you. I mean, that's the whole reason I was traveling with you there for a while, was to help you out and assist you with this whole situation. By the way, where are you? Where are we? What is going on? We're in the world. Does it smell like bacon? Oh. That explains a lot. Albert feels like he should have known this. But hey, here we are. You, uh, you doing okay? 
don't know. It's a lot. Is it? Mm. I mean, <laughs> is it like I, I, you have not only <laughs> been to nearly every nation on this godforsaken continent, uh, you've punch gods, mad scientists, ghosts, Alexander, me, you have, both of you have faced against unequal odds and have conquered most situations. I'm, I'm rather surprised that this is a lot for you. I mean, it could be worse. Well, for one of you, it could be better for the other, which is to say that it could be Draven with his <laughs> uh, well, helicopter. I guess it's more the reliving our all all the trauma thing. That? Oh, come now. I mean, yeah, that's pretty hard. I can't really say anything about that. But you're, you're, you're acting like that's beating you. We off of books. Uh, oh, well, that mindset, you'll never win. We have to this, we have to that, we have to this. You've always been somebody with the have tos. The other thing you should be saying is you will win this. It's easy. You've already done all of this before. The trauma, being sewn together, dealing with sins, the loss. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts like a fucking bitch. But when has pain ever dissuaded you? If anything, I think it's always persuaded you. Both of you. You both have a mouth. You both like to get motivated to do things. You both threw me on a fucking island when I threatened to fucking shoot you. You threw me into the desert. And you're saying all of this is beating you? That it's, 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 yeah, I'm confused. Come on. Like, oh, we gotta win this. Oh, we gotta win this. You will win this. Like, come on. We will. We'll go back to everything. There you go. Exactly. I mean, you'll not only have to, but you will. Waffleberg's always right. If there's one thing that you should have learned the entire time traveling with Waffleberg, that he's always right. And when it comes to pain, pain can be a lot. Especially the pain on the inside, the pain in your head, it can be a lot. It can sometimes be a maelstrom of thoughts and concerns, but... At the end of the day, it's just pain. You've lived through it all. And pain's a good way of knowing that you're alive. It's a reminder. I mean, the only reason that you're so afraid of losing everything is because there's things for you to lose. Yeah. So. This is really you. I'm not entirely sure. It could be me. It could also be a construct within your mind. Does it really matter? I think I sound quite alike. That or you're slowly going insane and I'm that part of you going insane. <laughs> you know, the fun thing, the fun thing about pain is after, after feeling it so many times, eventually from there, it's all just milk. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Shut up, Santa! <laughs> I am over here. I'm going to be 100% honest. I've been letting you guys do your own thing. I'm over here trying to catch Pokemon, and you're talking about milk. <laughs> it's simple, easy, and child's play. So, I'm going to need. Two more saves from both the twins. 
one last wisdom save for them both. Mm -hmm. With advantage because of Waffleberg's spirit's guidance. Worth reading what Josh put in the chat. Well, there's frantic scurrying and screeching. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll get to that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Don't worry, Lee needs that season two. That's season tossing. Season of milk. <laughs> you are now the milk. How do you feel, Josh? <laughs> I really wanted to call this last session something nice and uh, easy to wrap things up, but the temptation to just call it, it's just milk, is there now. <laughs> I guess you're welcome. Uh, you're welcome. You both. Clear your minds. Blocking out any temptation from the rune with the encouragement of your fallen ally. I am going to need, and this is going to be the last save that I'm going to need for this. Constitution saves from the above. Yes. Galleries. Okay. It was double figures. That's what we want to see. Just. You feel your body heat up, Dalrus. You feel it kind of pull on you, as if it's taking something away. It almost feels at a point like you're about to burn up into literal dust. Now, unfortunately, I am going to have to roll something here, because uh, while you aren't dead... A 10 is still a bad roll. I mean, I could re-roll it with strands of bait. You could, but do you want to risk it going lower? I take the highest with yeah. strands of bait. Oh, in that case, you, if you want to, you can re-roll. Does Delris get strands of bait? No, but if Alari could see if she's struggling, she could use it. That is fair. Do you wish to do so? Yeah. Go for it. Okay. Actually, nicely, evenly matches it out. I'm fine with this. Blam. So. As this is happening, you lose feeling in your... Which one would it have been? You begin to lose feeling in your left arm. I'm having a stroke. Are you going to look towards your left arm? Yeah, sure. You see it start to char up as if it's about to just crumble away and turn to ash. Mm -hmm. Before you see the familiar blue magic from uh, Alari just wrap around it, sparing its fate and sparing your arm. Do you look to your twin? Mm hmm. As the light fades, you see a stud there, no longer translucent. In her own body, once more. Just kind of like, Alari, just kind of looking down. Like, just looks at herself. I'm tall again. <sighs> I'm me. I'm tall again. That's what you're taking away from this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're really short. So many years and that was the first thing to come out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> should be noted that it is still extremely warm in here. And while you have managed to do this, your bodies are still feeling quite weak. Mm. 
We should get out of here. So, uh, yeah, I was gonna say if you guys are done, if you guys are done, I'm gonna head back. You know, back to eternity. Just kind of like Alari walks over and just like tries to touch Wufflebeak to see if she can. I don't go, know if she can. I don't through. know if he's a ghost or not. You go through. He is a spirit. Oh, you really go through. Uh -huh. Someone actually got to spawn. Holy shit. This is what the two can do. Then he comes, then he comes back to solidarity and telefrags. <laughs> yep. That. Oh, my telefragging. Hello. Oh, I know. I know you miss me. I miss you guys too. But I'm happy you're knowing you all are alive instead of munch talk. So go back out there. You know, do, 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 do you things. You things. Disgusting, fleshy, you things. And uh, yeah. And remember, whenever you're in your sweet beds, looking your loved ones in the face, always remember, I'm just hovering above you as a ghost, watching you eternally. Bye! <laughs> Well, that's not worrying. <laughs> Perfect Waffle Burger line. The Waffle Burger equivalent of always watching Mike Wazowski. <laughs> always watching. So, for those on the outside, it's been roughly half an hour. There's been no sign, no sight. No sound from within. And then there is something off in the distance, just making the way up from the cave back to the entrance. Which of the two would be coming out first, would you say? Probably Delrus. You all see Delrus approaching. Alari. Alari is not faced the others in a, her proper form before, so she's probably hanging back a little. That's fair. So you see Dalrus approaching. Dalrus... I ain't saying shit until I give another few moments. <laughs> Dalrus, you do see everyone else there, just waiting as they were. A few of the NPCs have gotten off the ship as well, including your mother, Umpa, Nico. Just gonna step out back into the light. Hey, guys! Ah, you're not dead! There also does not appear to be two of you. Just like... Uh, a few moments later, just the Lowry's like... Ah. Uh, hello? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you're not, uh, you're not casting an illusion spell on no, it's really me. Hot, to, hot to check. Oh my goodness. It, it, yeah, the height, the height difference between these two is quite like. Oh, so it I didn't. You, weren't putting you couldn't. On front. Yeah, you couldn't see it before because like illusion spells only like give you an extra foot of height. <laughs> well, no, they don't. They only give you like a few inches, actually. Yeah. So it's like she couldn't be her actual height. Your mother at this point will kind of stagger forward a bit. Not because of drunkenness or anything like that. She is totally sober. More more because of emotion. Yes. Lara. You did it. Yeah. My girls are both back. We, uh, well, I saw where Dad was while we were down there. Well, we already know he's technically in a better place now. I mean, he his spirit's here somewhere. He was guarding the world ruin when we left. This is the DM remembering that now, rather than what the yes. DM thought beforehand of... Uh, them being in leisure. 
Oh. That's why Delris was speaking to him. <laughs> that was what they did before they left the first time. <laughs> yeah. This that's, is where he just pops out and he's like, family! <laughs> where did you get out here? Waff- this is just where it turns out the Wolfenberg spirit is just still down there just waiting. <laughs> Their dad just appears. It's like, I'm back. What did I miss? Shit. He was in the ghost equivalent of the shower, okay, guys? He was on the it's gosh. Fine. He was on the ectoplasm pot, aka the shitter. <laughs> That's why Delrus was speaking to him, because we left him here to guard the place. I've got ideas for it, don't worry. Yeah, we left him here to guard this place when we left last time. Oh, I thought Actually, he would have been... hasn't popped out yet. Udia just <laughs> kind of smiles. And he'll just kind of look to the side. Who do you think told me about this place and all this? <laughs> As you look up to the ridge where Pinko is just sat watching, you see a spirit now sat there as well. I, I'm sorry, my daughters, I couldn't interfere there at the risk of losing myself as well. Sort of. Do do we all see this? I want to let you know, this is a very small ledge, like, just big enough for Pinko, so this bitch is floating off to the side. (laughs) Uh, uh, Alexander, sees that this guy's up there, cracks his knuckles and goes, Right, Alexander's getting the first one. There are two things you should know about Alexander. (laughs) Alexander, that's our dad! I'm gonna make, uh, you know what? Eh? (laughs) <laughs> Alexander, just just Alexander um, I, I, it is too late. Get in the hug. <laughs> there you go. I was gonna, I was gonna say, just a whisper upon the wind. Become their new daddy. And, and, and Alexander will, will hug the blue one because I forgot which name is which again. Damn it! Um... <laughs> Get hugged, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> How tall is Alexander? Six foot. Oh, we're the same height. P- pretty much on 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 the bottom. Oh <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you know, you hug Alari. Alari hugs back. They're the same height, so it's. <laughs> Your mother will join in on this as well, just bringing Delris into hug as well. Yeah. <laughs> and you will feel like something. <laughs> you'll feel like a ghostly touch as the father joins in as well. Well, the father spirit. Is anyone else getting in on this? Of course. Yep. Me. Feathers everywhere. Pitu it is now in. socially mandated of you. I hope you all know this. Pitu joins Point in. God you... Kuiper will join in. <laughs> <laughs> Just get it out of the way. <laughs> get it out. Clings to everyone's head. <laughs> Kuiper somehow managed to get back. Just looks but, up. Uh, well, that's disturbing. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Patu will join in from the top. Mariah will join in leg, like hip height. Vex is the only one that doesn't join in. It's just, just kind of there being like, I'm going to let you all just have your moments here. I'm not going to ruin it. Somebody just pulls her into the hug. Probably Mariah, let's be honest here. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, but also just like a mage hand from a lorry just driving the back uh, of the hood. <laughs> fine, you get one this century. How long does a century last again? I forget for these Mortys. Uh, Generally speaking, I don't think we last a century. Ah, it depends how much magic you pump into yourself. There are lots of magics that can make you immortal. Fair point. So most of them happen by accident. Miko will just smile what? during all this and then. Sorry, go on, Lee. You just heard the you just heard the poison lady's voice on the wind. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! That that what? was pin that was Pinko. Okay, because Pin- Pinko has Pinko has mimicry, so anybody he's heard, he can like semi mimic yeah. their voice. He creates just, I, his own. But again, though, we've not really heard him speak, but speak. So it's just like what? 
Pinko choosing to speak it. at the very last moment. Pink, looks like Pinko like... turns out to be the narrator at this point, as it's just been narrating all this like Morgan Freeman. <laughs> and they lived happily ever after, <laughs> as the story went on to the end of their days. But, um, yes. Nico will smile this back. So Nico doesn't want to break the mood, but what happens now? Mm. Well, I guess I we can I... do what we want. <laughs> Alexander's like, ha, you really can. <laughs> but what is it that we all want? Cause... Mm. I don't know. No, I haven't really had time to think about it. Me neither. Not really thought about what comes after much, in all honesty. Do we still travel together, or...? Oh, if you wanna. I mean, there's plenty of places out there we haven't been yet. I would be honored to travel with you. Of course, you guys are family. She'll look to both Mariah and Alexander. Alexander supposes that after all that we have done, Alexander deserves a little time with his wife. Showing her the world before he goes to uh, make the Freljord stop stabbing each other. Yeah. We should probably. It feels just... like we should probably upgrade the ship at some point. Yeah. Can we should you... probably also visit some people and let them know we're, like, alive. Nico has a. Uh... Nico has an idea. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. also. Mariah, come too? Yes. Okay. And if Mariah's coming, that means her girlfriend's coming, too. Nico just, so... like... <laughs> Nico just kind of pulls out the world map and points towards Targon. Never been to here. Targon? Hmm. Hmm. Go see Kuiper's that's... people. Yeah, that's where Kuiper is from. Tells Delara about everything. That's true. Hmm. Maybe we'll see Feeny. So, are you all boarding the ship? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yep. You all board the gently used fish. And as it takes off, heading towards Targon, we do what we like to call the epilogue time skip. The epilogue time skip! It has been 200 years since the separation of Alarian Dowris. Fuck me! You didn't half do a fucking time skip! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I thought it was going to be like, oh, this is where the characters are! Oh, this, we are doing this, technically. We are going to show the impact the characters have had on the world. I am also going to drag us all over to here. Hopefully. Hang on. For some reason, Santa separate to this, to the original screen that we used when we started this. Oh, we're in the voice. We need to draw some shit, lads. <laughs> it's been 200 years since the separation. The gently used fish at that point had become quite well known. Travelling from place to place, helping out where they could, but generally just enjoying their downtime. Eventually, however, every party does need to separate. Alexander and his wife did indeed go back to the Freljord. They spent their days practicing what they preached, trying to get the peace going. It's not exactly 100% working yet, but 
big strides have been made to the point where it's an uneasy alliance between the three. There have even been discussions of perhaps just forming under one banner rather than the Winter's Claw, the Avarosans and the Frostguard all coming together just to be known as the Freljord itself. I did a thing. Meanwhile, over in Demacia, no one visited Demacia, we can ignore Demacia, get Demacia out of here. <laughs> the, no the, one wants to go to Demacia. <laughs> in Noxus. The Black Rose, unfortunately, has been going through strength on strength. But oddly enough, despite his years getting on, Swain has been keeping a close eye on that and making sure things haven't been going their way. Been cracking down on them even harder since the escape of their secret weapon. A small little vampire girl. Even though apparently she's not a girl, she's a woman, but who could... Don't draw like that, Riot. Uh, Darius? Remember, remember, it, it, legally, she she's many centuries old. She just oh, no, happens is... to be... She's a lollipire? <laughs> no, she, this is the thing. They, uh, she actually isn't. They have made sure people know. No, she's 20-odd. <laughs> she is actually a young woman. Which it's just the art program, didn't help. Which is just... <laughs> but, um, yes. Darius will have passed. His heir is now taking up his position. Draven, while having... To, well, still trying to keep the relationship going, eventually it didn't work out between him and Alari. But uh, he didn't go back to his playboy ways. He actually ended up forming a nice relationship and actually had a daughter. He wanted to name it to Lowry, but uh, the his wife said no. I have to settle for a law rich. <laughs> <laughs> Rel managed to keep the peace, make sure that a certain someone didn't overtake a certain small yordle. Uh, she took a small helmeted yordle under her wing to help them keep control over a certain I am Revenant. Mm. Cled is still Cled. He has just added a few new titles to his name since last time, including the Void Slayer. <laughs> also, apparently, he acts as a bit of a go between. Between doors on the outside and Noxus and Noxus itself. Mainly because no one will tell him no. Or rather, they won't tell him no and he'll listen to them. Ionia has kind of united. The Shadow Clan and the Kinku have put aside their differences for now. <laughs> Kinku. I think that is what the uh, thing is called, anyway. Uh. The Shadow House is actually starting to see life bloom again. Maokai's factions are actually taking hold. Piltover and Zorn, they're still kind of at each other's necks, let's be honest here, but there's been a bit of a closer eye being kept on the Ken Barons now. Their actions are definitely being heavily monitored. In what is known oddly as the Waffleberg Act. Ah! Ixtal is still Ixtal. No one cares about Ixtal. <laughs> I feel bad, but even Riot doesn't care about Ixtal too much, so why should we? Shreema. has gone back to its glory days, but Azir has definitely taken a more modern view on the world compared to his old conquer everything days of old. He's actually starting to broker peace between everywhere, including Targon their closest neighbours. Speaking of, the Solari and Lunari have put aside the differences in United, thanks to the help from Stellara, who has become the right-hand woman of Diana. 
and all the way through this. Oh, and the uh, Yordle, Bandle City is Bandle City. Bandle City is always changing. It's kind of hard to say what's really happening there. It's Bandle. Probably uh, Rumble's doing another class on mechs. Which Mariah helps out from from time to time. Including a little sister who's now taking the test. So I just remembered that Mariah has a little sister. <laughs> yes. And first we get back to where the adventure all began all those time ago. Bilgewater. A nice tavern made out of an old ship. Where people come just to get drinks, swap stories. And generally, we do actions unseen to the rest of the world. As everyone is drinking at the bar, a bit of commotion happens as someone rushes in. Seems to be like a young, scrawny street urchin who just shouts out, Reality! Reality just got a tear! There's a tear in reality over at the docks! And everyone in the bar turns to a few patrons sat there. They turn to a small yordle with bushy purple hair. I see that word. <laughs> they turn to a yordle. <laughs> they turn to a yordle with bushy hair. They turn to an eggplant, twice her size now, with a uh, pointed crown. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I I got distracted because my dad's playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla and it just glitched the hell out of him and made him join the space program. It teleported him up to the highest point on the map and just dropped him. <laughs> but uh, yes, an eggplant twice her size with a regal looking crown. Two sisters. Quite older now, a bit of grey in their hair, mixed with the orange flame-like hair of one and the blue flame-like hair of the other. Because apparently Brand is so many years, like thousands of years old, so it would make sense that the twins could live this long. Yeah. And what seems to be an elderly Iceborne, <laughs> as well as... Too stubborn to die. Pretty much. Like, the best way I could put it is, if you know the Discworld novels, imagine Conan the Barbarian from that. And a avian Vestayan, whose feathers are now definitely taken on a lot more of the pinkish hue than the more spiritual hue. Yet, don't seem to have aged a single bit. And of course, a tiny, small Poro being cradled in the hands of a doll-like being. As indeed, it will have been enough years now for the poison lady to come back. She probably literally woke up like 20 years ago. <laughs> She's like, girl, what happened while I was gone? Oh my god, we have a baby? <laughs> yes. And indeed, picked up, picked up Pinko, and then they ended up here. <laughs> sat between Alari and Dalris. Standing at roughly yep. uh, twice their height is a large female yeti. Oh, what class did Umpa take? That's barbarian. <laughs> Perfect. Wild, wild magic barbarian. Even better. Everyone will look to you all, expecting the crew of the gently used fish to act once more to save the world. Just kind of, I was just looking at like the Lars from looking at a drink, going, oh, "I guess we should go look." 
Alexander supposes it is time. Oh, Walker. Alexander <laughs> still has the power of Volibear flowing through him. It's probably all that is keeping him from falling apart, to be honest. Every um, time Alexander's heart stops, Volibear is lightning surging <laughs> through and starts his heart again. Every time he falls. Alexander you will pick up his... Uh, Alexander <laughs> takes his new favourite toy, which is some massive hammer that looks like it should only be carried by something twice his size. Yep. And as you will Why? head out to face this. Over at the docks. Back where Ledros's old ship was all that time back. You do indeed see a tur in reality open up. Is it purple? Oh. It is indeed leaking purple energy. Oh, Look good. on the bright side. It's been yeah. less than six months since we last had to deal with one of these. And out from it strides a small purple furred being. One that, you have, one that you have not seen for some time. Hasn't aged today. As Kuiper re-emerges into this realm. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Kuiper? That has to be considered somewhat of a plot twist. Oh, it is Kuiper. Look at that. Oh, Wafferberg was wondering where he went. <laughs> just oh, 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 right oh, just everyone looked to the side. <laughs> Wafferberg is now possessing the eggplant. That's why he's could no longer go <laughs> no. <over> her. <laughs> no, Wafferberg told you that when you look your loved ones in the face, I'll be there. I'll bring it above you. Yes, yes, yes. And usually I'm the one stuck babysitting because everybody else has plans. <laughs> <laughs> you got fucking old. <laughs> I mean, you still out age all of us. <laughs> right. Oh, maybe Mariah, I don't remember if she was older. But... So Kaipa comes out of purple scar. This is not normally a good thing. Kuiper, is that you? There's a guttural sound coming out of his three mouths. You think you hear the word gravy at some point. Uh... Oh, I missed it's... him so much. Screeches. Was that... Did we get did you did... tea? Gravy, did you say? Gravy and tea sounds kind of nasty. Does anyone have tea? I will pull out one of the many horns I've been collecting over the years. <laughs> one of which will indeed produce tea and gravy. <laughs> you just need to make I sure you it the correct way. <laughs> I imagine after 200 years, all resemblance of anything is just completely gone. <laughs> The main thing that's letting them know it's Kuiper, aside from the mention of gravy and tea, are indeed the three eyes that are still there, the slight fuzziness, uh, it's still fuzzy. and just a general but... shape. But yeah, given the three mouths, the now what seem to be like four or five extra arms, the three extra tails, and quite literally what seems to be a uh, plethora of what can only be described as void fish swimming around above him. Can I, like, lean down and just try to, like, poke him? Oh, it terrifies me. Still remembers. <laughs> it terrifies me that he survived 200 years in that place. Oh, that's the thing. For them, it's been 200 years. For you, you don't, you're do not you not sure how long it's been. It's the void. The time doesn't exist. Go, look, Ghostberg only has to say how adorable it is that Kuiper never forgot about the gently used fish. Look, he's even brought his own gently used fish. Just try to go, like, poke him. He goes to poke him? Mm -hmm. I mean... Kuiper's gonna attack everything in, in a 50 mile radius. <laughs> Except well... he's lost all of his magic. He's just going on an absolute rampage. Yep. Well, time to chase him with a hammer. 
as the fish why do indeed why swarm away just... from as the fish do swarm away from Caper's head, tearing apart everything in sight. I guess like we're at this the... point we're high level caster. Level twenty. <laughs> we're, we're Twi level, level twenty, 20 yeah. obviously. So I'm just gonna immediately use hold monster on but, him. Um <laughs> just let me just quickly state something. <laughs> Because I did just get messaged with this, I do just want to quickly get this flavor out there as well. Because <laughs> you do mention this, as the fish do start to tear into stuff, a much larger fish emerges from the top of the tavern, swimming directly in the air. The little tiny shark you knew was Devi is now just a fully grown, like, megalodon size. Oh it's my also goodness. a giant wharf rat. Um... <laughs> giant wharf rat, giant. Debbie. Oh, you know, like. Quite literally, with how big war rats can get, he's now as big as like a leopard. Yeah, but he's like a giant flaming. Yeah. War rat. Your cr pebble is now actually a fully grown pebble. Uh, crook. Probably has we a few small crooks on his back now. So yeah, I'm immediately going to just cast hold monster out on him at like max level. <laughs> so, as you hold what do you monster, need? Uh, at ninth level. <laughs> what is it that hold monster? We have all the two hundred level twenty. Cry about it. So, look, hold monster. Uh, I choose a creature within range. Target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. Be wisdom paralyzed tip. for the duration. There you go. Wisdom. So, Thank you. For every slot above fifth level it targets one extra creature so i'm targeting mm. all the fish as well okay oh. i'll just go say this just off the bat a the fish will fail b i was expecting this actually get to rolls <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just fucking around and finding out um pretty much so kuiper meets the dc kuiper actually is not held <laughs> I mean, though, to be fair, at this point, I, I could have fucking wish. But, uh... Yeah, but have you used it? I am going to no, say I this, though, it. given Alexander did mention it. Uh, Kuiper, make yep. me a wisdom save, again, with advantage. Okay. As you lunge at the party, ready to tear them apart, a scent hits probably one of your four noses. I am arbitrarily just adding numbers to like, how many limbs you are at this, have at this point. <laughs> <laughs> just he's just constantly like new for limbs every body are growing part. while old, like while old limbs are fucking attracting. He's just become a chaos spawn at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a smell you have not sent of uh, sensed in some time, and a sliver of the one you once were comes back. With one word just the purging in your mind. T. <laughs> give, give insert horn of tea into creature for <laughs> <Hope for> rest. <laughs> Consumes everything laid before him. Including oh. Including the containers. <laughs> Can I use Wish to try and return Kuiper to oh. what he was like um, the last time we saw him? Let me just look this up, because I know Wish works Careful. between this and the Pathfinder. It does. It really does. Um, I can... Uh, out of character, please be careful. <laughs> Basically, the wish is return Kuiper to the way he was the last time we saw him. <laughs> because the last time we saw Alari saw him was before he left on the T Hex. That is your exact wording, is it? Mm -mm. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> We turn him to the way we saw we last saw him. To a wish spell means basically turning back time for him, turning him back into that individual. 
State your wish to DDM as precisely as possible. The DM has great latitude in ruling what occurs in such an instance that the greater the wish, the greater the likelihood that something goes wrong. Spell will simply fail the effect. Okay. So, Basically, in, um, in character, tell me what the wish is. Okay. Uh... <laughs> How much of a dick move would it be as just as soon as the wish is revealed, instead of stating what happens, just going, that's where we're ending? <clears throat> I, already got it. I mean, that's what I, I thought I, this I, was when Kaiper got I, revealed. I totally I was, it that. was supposed to be what it was when Kaiper got revealed, and therefore yeah. we'll just carry on playing. No, I, like, to I, totally, I totally, I totally respect the wish just being cast and being like, boom, the end. <laughs> so. You know, you, you, if, if, <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you don't keep it somewhat like, uh, you know, Good wiggly right. jiggly, also, how are you going to run would... season two? How are you going gonna... <laughs> to? I would. I, would I love the fact that everyone's like calling for season two. I would very much like to state that Ghost Waffleberg is just like attempting to pet Void Kuiper, just like see, he's okay. See, he even remembers how to bite. If it's we fine. Do, if we do it's a okay. If we do a season two, I'm making you all make new characters from D D Demacia. Oh, oh, God. No magic users. No. <laughs> oh no! I was a magic user until I oh, until no, one of us until party. one of us sneezes and then finds out like... that we have the ability to explode light out of our nose. Actually, no. Technically, like... yep. You you know how powerful Mar Marshall care a full party of Marshall characters can be. I was, You'd rather us go full magic. <laughs> but I was also remembering that technically it's been two hundred years since everything happened. Uh, going off the law of how things were back then, mages are technically now allowed because of the end of Mage Seeker. Huh. The master got rid of its one thing. That well, Spoilers for Mage Seeker, everybody room. out there. Everyone who was wanted to play this, probably. Uh, actually, I've not played it. Get <laughs> fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay. Is... Okay. So. I wish to restore Kuiper to the same state he was. Um, before he became corrupted. You wish to restore Kuiper to the same state he was before he became corrupted. Yeah. Boom, teleported to Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're not in Kansas anymore, sweetie. <laughs> this could go one of three ways and i'm going oh, free to, some on. to see which one it is oh. okay so i'll go go through what options one and two were before i say what option three was because that'd be funny option one was to state he was before he became corrupt became like this kind of thing it would have been before he entered the ring in the first place, and therefore he would have been teleported back to Targon. The second one was before he became like this in this state, and therefore he would have been teleported back to the Void. As himself, but back to the Void. Because <laughs> technically the last time he was himself was when he first entered the Void. But with the three... A blinding light surrounds the area, covering everything and everyone. And that's where we're ending. <laughs> no. I respect <laughs> it. <laughs> I respect it, and then I yeah. immediately take it back. <laughs> Kay agrees. Actually, no, I, I, I think I do like the idea of just leaving it on a bit of a cliffhanger, though. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's in there. I think that's perfect. Eek. And one last voice is heard among everything. Two, well, two voices technically are heard. 
communicating with themselves. It's been fascinating to watch them over these years. Yes, but when do we get our turn? Well, we keep trying with that one, but the god won't allow it. And the twins? Who knows how long they'll last. We cut off the bird and we cut off the yodel. No. But give them time. You can't they will bring us either, others. Sweetie. As the lamb and the wolf just watch on. As they have done all this time. We said one thing to kill them and all. Of course you have each with you. <laughs> it's just so fucking salty. Um... And that is where we're ending the Dark Tides of Rune Terror. Oh. Next time is going to be Devil Darling Season 2. The time after that! <laughs> <laughs> something, 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 maybe vampires. Oh. Yeah, let's keep an eye out for possible Only maybe. Oh, okay. so. It depends whether Santa can run it then. Because I, I, he's going to run a few like one-shotty type ones so that I can get used, a bit more used to the system. <gasps> so, I right. I hope you've all enjoyed this. Yeah. Not just this yes, session, but immensely. this campaign oh, in general. No more. If I didn't enjoy the campaign, I wouldn't have stuck with it. It was great. Exactly. Congratulations. You got me to play more League of Legends than I ever legally would in any right sense of mind, <laughs> in any other form, in any other way than I ever will. See, I and have... you didn't have to spend a single dollar. I, have, I think I've proved here, quite literally put, the problem is the game itself, not the world. The lore and the world and the characters... No, I'm still me. never, ever, ever letting you off turning me into a fucking cupcake on, like, session three. <laughs> Fuck you. But still. Um, well, I'll on your right session back. three, I don't know what session that was for us, because I know that this will be episode 115. We have done 115. Oh, damn! Well, technically 117 if you include the two shots. Uh... With the, and I do, I, yes. I do. But not only was this an ending for this, I feel like I've also <laughs> tried to. I also tried to. I also tried to wrap, <laughs> also tried really? to wrap up the uh, alchemist and all those storylines as well with this. Yeah. Will I ever see myself coming back for a season two of this? It'd probably just be another game in the same you world wanna, at that point. You you, you want to give the same answer that Dinka K gave uh, when people were asking her why he's not doing a bunch of League stuff, which is when League actually starts putting out actual lore and shit, and sure. <laughs> Pretty much. It, it probably will be one of those cases of, no, we're not going to do a season two with an asterisk they're saying until the MMO. <laughs> Well, then we... we just play it in the MMO. I'm not going to lie. I do want to download that MMO and recreate some of the characters for this in there. I think me and Rebecca have already said, well, that once that MMO comes out, we're making characters for that. And I think Mariah's being made. If it lets you play as Yordles anyway. But, uh, yes. Is it bad that I'm not feeling as overly emotional with the end of this one as I was for Devil Darlings? Well, yeah, it's such your first. <laughs> I mean, that is first. That is first. You know what? Hilarious. That is first. Thing is, way. <laughs> yeah. Freudian slipper right there. So, Pinko would still be able to stay within his form of being a Poro, like a little plushy Poro. But at the same time, uh, one of my like final decisions on Pinko was that he was going to become the two aspects, but as ghost children, because technically his two aspects aren't really like real they're obviously the hallowed spirit and fear oh, so shit. shit we did this so... whole storyline it's not the end yet we've got more sessions milk we have more <laughs> sessions but at milk. the same time we don't because milk. 200 years passed and he's already done it yeah uh question are we still recording yes we are okay because I, I just want to get oh somewhere. sick Delra has probably spent a bunch of time just exploring with Nico for a while uh, during that 200 year period. 
I think after like five days of being in the afterlife with Waffleberg's family, he got fucking bored. <laughs> here's, here's the yeah. ultimate question that needs to be asked now. Alexander, how many ah. children? Look, lay, 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 lay. It's nanny. It's nanny. It's nanny. Og's level. There right here no we go. Number. We're gonna roll. There's no mm. number. We're gonna roll, roll two D100. dice. The first dice D100. is gonna determine, uh, in my mind, um, how many, and the second dice will determine with how many. Um, <laughs> no, no, we're not doing very many, are we? That was Maybe a D twenty. It's certainly not. It's going to be one or none by 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 the rules of of the percentile in my mind. Apparently, uh, Alexander uses protection. Fry about it. Um, <laughs> Turns out the the first time he got the shock through the body, it just fried any reproductive pr potential. He has taken to raising Mariah as his child instead, despite the fact that Mariah is twice the age. At least. <laughs> the, god, the gods decided that Alexander's too much of a threat to let other Alexanders running around. <laughs> Ale Alexander didn't have time to have children. He kept getting yeah, when, that when I became a, uh, When I became a paladin of conquest, everyone misunderstood me until I used spell create condom. Um... <laughs> uh, but yes. Yeah, it's, uh... it's actually started to hit now. Yep, yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. It's, uh, it, it, this, uh, I think I said this a few times, but again, to let it sink in, this is the first long-term 5th edition campaign I've ever finished, and really, the only long-term campaign I've finished. And now you get to tell people it was a League of Legends one. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a lot better than saying it was a Warhammer 40k campaign that Jamie got bored of at the last minute. So, quite literally put, do you know the meme of you're on a League of Legends? Instead of that just being like the thing, it's just like you're on a leakage of legends, you could, you could just turn around and be like, yeah, first campaign I ever finished properly. Yeah, I completed the MMO. Cry about it. Give me a sec. Where's the... <laughs> oh, but... Yeah. It's happening again. Where's... Mm. And with that, folks, we say with, goodbye. With that, folks, you've made the DM cry. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> the DM is no longer crying. <laughs> Come on. Come on. The DM is crying with laughter, I guess. If you, if, you, if you enjoyed this campaign, feel free to watch Devil Darlings, Echoes Through the Past, Star Plunder, and more. <laughs> also, eventually, Vampire the Masquerade one-shots and... Vampire the Masquerade campaign. One shot ran by me, campaign ran by Dion, and then later on we're going to play Fart, the TTRPG, which uh, of course, the one, the only. <laughs> that one I, yeah, yeah. But um, also on top of that, there is Baldur's Gate 3 still being uploaded. We will be getting back to observation duty at some point as well. Basically, I need to find stuff to fill out the days before we start doing uh, uh, the one shots. <laughs> um, we'll start. We'll start the one shots fairly quick. There yeah. won't be too much of a time. But, uh, from uh, from me personally, as well as from everyone here at the Devil Darlings. Oh, I ain't talking, mummy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Do I have permission to talk to you? I give you permission. Okay. Thank you all so much for letting us just go about with this. Big thank you to Riot as well for, well, the lore. Also, big thank They're you. They're giving us enough stuff so I don't have to play their fucking game! Um, big, big thanks to uh, Necrit as well for helping out with the lore videos. He, oh, yeah. he did a lot of lore dumps that I've been able to use for this. But most personally, thank you to everyone that's helped out with this. And to my players. Yay! I couldn't have done it without you guys. <laughs> oh, God. That, that, that's kind of how a 5th edition campaign works, Lee. Give me a sec. Thank you, Lee. Yay. Also, nice also, also. I, I, I need to bring this up now, because I know 
Oh, she's gone from the chat. Never mind. I was about. She needs to come off now. But thanks for a great fellow, Jess. She said. I was about she to went say a while to back. Yeah, she she went like sixteen minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, we'll see you next time in another campaign. For in a current later. ongoing campaign that we've got. In another space and another time. Really, we'll just fucking see you. We're always watching. You can't fucking hide from us. Even if you go into your closet, even under your bed, we know. We see. We hear. Unless you use this video sponsor, Nord VPN. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> imagine the Nord last VP. session. Imagine the last session we got a sponsor and it was Nord VPN or something like that. Nord VPN, where we're always watching. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to be a case of I'll end this, I'll upload it next week. And I'll get a message from Riot being like, Do you want to join a creator thingy? And I'll be like, But I've just uh, finished. No. It's done. Then do We're another done. one. Make we'll more lore, motherfucker. It's like no. But yeah, so uh, thank you and goodbye. <gasps> right. He said the thing! <gasps> the thing! <laughs> <laughs>